Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mike here at Game from Scratch. And today, we are looking at a very specialized art tool. It's called Block Bench, and really, you could think of this as a blocky 3D modeler. It, it's kind of like for that Minecraft art style. In fact, it's very much set up for creating Minecraft style models. But if you're going for that art style, you could just as easily use this for your own game. You've got a number of different options for exporting, and what they can do with this guy is basically you create things out of blocks, of different size blocks, and only blocks. So you need to be able to think in terms of blocky. It, it, it takes a little bit to get used to, but once you do, uh, you can actually get some pretty nice results out of it. And the nice thing here is if you're going for a, a kind of different art style, so a little bit more constrained or uh, instead of pixely, you're going for the polygon look, Block Bench could be a good fit for you. So you can see a number of things that were made using Block Bench uh, as they exist up on Sketchfab. And you can actually do uh, really sharp work here. I think this is, is this Optimus Prime? No, it's not. It's Firetruck. That's too bad. If it was Optimus Prime, that would have been so much cooler. But as you can see here, it is a blocky base modeler. You could also say voxel. Technically, it is, it isn't. Sort of like Minecraft technically is and isn't. It's all in one. Animations are in there. Plugins are in there. Uh, you Multiple people can actually work on things together so you can collaborate with a friend and work on the same thing. It's available in 12 different languages and it has texturing built in. On top of that, if you want to download it, uh, you can grab it for Windows. Uh, Windows Portable, which is basically just an EXE you can run from anywhere. Mac OS, Linux, Linux, and Linux. So you got your Linux I uh, all available there as well. So for most major platforms, it is out there. Plus, it is completely free. If you like what they do, they do have a donate link. They also have a Discord available if you've got some questions. So that is, in a nutshell, an introduction to Blockbench. Now let's go take a look. So I'm using the... Uh, the download portable version, basically download it and go. You may have noticed back when I was over here, uh, there is actually an option to run this directly in the web app if you so wish. I know some of you guys are not huge fans of web-based technology. Me, eh, I'm fine with it. So you can see we got a number of different options. So if you're working on uh, Minecraft Java Edition, you've got this here, uh, Bedrock, Modded Entity, Optifine. You know what? I am not a Minecraft guy. I don't know what any of this stuff means. So I'm going to do it for uh, generic, which can be used generically. Uh, so I'll call this my my model. All right, so you set up your texture size right here. I'm going to stick with totally low uh, resolution here. You can also set up box UVs if you so wish, or you can have kind of per face UV, I guess we'd call it, and go ahead and create it. So there we are. We are now in the modeler. You might be going, oh, okay, now what? And yep, so right mouse button, you can pan around. Middle mouse button orbits in. Pretty straightforward controls on the whole. And now what you're going to probably do the first thing is create a model. So what you do, come over here to the outliner. You're going to notice here you've got an add cube. You can add it a cube in. That's it. You're done. That is your only primitive. That's all you have to work with is this singular cube. But what you can do with this cube is you can move it around, as you can see by these controls right here, and you can resize it like so. You've also got the option to rotate it. you got standard, uh, standard widgets and handlers going on here, uh, but basically... Yep, that's that's kind of what you do. So here we got a, uh, let's see, what's that? Six by, I don't know, 25 kind of block going on here. Over here we have UMAP, UV maps. We can create textures on this guy. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go over down here. You can import a texture in or we can create a brand new texture. There we go. Uh, so we'll call it, sure, texture. We can set a default color for it. Sure, white, 16 by 16. All right, all sounds great to me. So that is our texture on this map. To assign it, just boom. Drop it in on a face or on a side. So you're now going to notice each different direction. So the up one now has it on the side. We'll do one to this side here as well. And I guess that's east, south, north. Ah, there we go. It's on north. And you can create new textures for each particular side. You could have also, of course, done box mapping and gone with a more traditional UV style approach. So we'll just do this texture on every side. We'll get some weird results out of this, but hey, that's how I roll. All right, so there we go. We've got this texture applied to every face in our model right here. Of course, I could have created a new texture for each uh, set of faces. Would have made things a whole lot easier. Uh, we come up here and bring up the UV editing windows like so. And we have all of the individual sides available to us. Uh, if we had our paint tool open right now, we could actually go ahead and paint in here. Uh, you've got auto UVing, maximum, you got UV settings and all that stuff right available here. Uh, you can change the amount or how to overlap of what we've actually drawn on this texture. So if you only want to use a bit of it, you can use a bit of it. You could have multiple images on a single texture and just clamp to the area that you want. On that topic, let's go back. Texture is set here. We're going to switch over to paint mode now. I can go ahead in here, and here you see you can paint. Now we're going to get a lot of overlap going on because, again, our UVs are... I wonder why that one is missing. Uh, anyways, our UVs are using the whole thing. So I could take one of these guys here. Oops, do not want copy paste. 
I want to go back to my UV window. And again, you can paint directly in here as well if you have a paintbrush active. Uh, but what I could have done is I could take an individual set of UVs and I could move them around. Where are my movement tools? Uh, maximize? Nope, not what I wanted. All right, anyways, you got your full UV tools over there. Uh, you got control over them. You can paint in and around, uh, move things around on the image. Let's go back to my painting brush. Here we go. So there you see we're maximizing the UV. So we're using the entire UV space instead of just our little individual bit there. What you would normally have done is actually set up for, um, you know, per face kind of uh, set up and drawn each one. So, you know, you do your, your smiley face or whatever you want to do. Uh, something like, I don't know, you, you, and smile. But in this case, I'm, I've got the same set of UBs using all the way across the images, which is kind of stupid. So then once you've got this guy ready to go, you could go ahead and animate as well. Now, animation is not going to work that, oops, not going to work that well in this case, because really all we have is the single cube, not much you could do to that. So what we're going to do now is actually create a group. Now, imagine that this was, I don't know, a bird. Uh, so now I have a new bone right here. And attach to that bone, we're going to go ahead and add a new group underneath. Uh, so we'll call this whole thing wing. We'll call this one, uh, I don't know, base wing. And then below that, we will add another group, and we will call this wing tip. All right, so here we go. We've got wing, base of the wing. So the base of the wing, we're going to go ahead and add a cube to that. And let's just... Uh, come on down here. All right. Up. Uh, size you out a little bit. All right, there we go. So there, pull it out. All right, so there is base wing. And then wing tip. We'll go ahead and add a cube to that. And again, let's move this guy over. And then over. And I think up. Over. All right. One sec. Okay, had to go to a slightly different angle. Let's move this guy over here. All right, change the size. So this is how you'd kind of model things. So let's just do a wing out. So now we have this, this different set of things going on with all of the stuff attached to it. Now we can go over to animation. So you got a normal timeline over time. First thing we need to do is create a new animation. Yeah, sure, we'll call it that. Uh, yeah, all right. So we're going to create our wing flapping animation. Now you'll see you need to have groups in order to, to animate. So we got the base of the wing right here, and we can do simple things like set animation keys. So we could go ahead and go, uh, let's see, uh, base wing, new key. All right, so let's advance it in time a little bit. And new key, and in that key, we'll drag it down. And then for wing tip, we'll go to the same spot, and we will create... Wing tip, rotation, new key. All right, so there we go. And we'll grab wing tip. Okay, so I would have wanted to set that relative to the other one. Uh, there is a way of doing that. There's also a way you can set up an inverse kinematic uh, relationship between, th actually, that might have been what I needed to do. Anyways, we should have kind of kept them together. In order to do that, I needed to set the pivot point on it, and I didn't do that. So that's back here somewhere, so the pivot point. For the pivot point of my wing tip, this guy right here, instead of being at the center point, what I want to do is actually move that slightly. So that's uh, that's this way. So you want to move it so that it's it's in a good spot. I can't actually see my pivot at this direction. So anyways, you want your pivot to be set up so that when you do your animation, uh, it animates relative to the pivot point, not towards where uh, actually it's orientated right now. Anyways, we created a real crap animation. We can go ahead and see this guy in action. Ooh, that's an amazing animation, wouldn't you say? So obviously I'm showing you a really ugly textured model, a really ugly animation, but I'm showing you more importantly how everything relates together. So you got your traditional keyframe approach to animation here. Uh, you build everything out. Think of each one of these things as basically just a bone. Each one of the bones here, which also known as groups, each one of the bones can in turn contain uh, multiple cubes. So I could select a uh, wingtip, for example, and I could randomly add in another... So with wingtip selected, go ahead, create another cube like so. Let's just move that guy over there. And now if I go back to my animation, that guy should move with the animation. So you can have multiple uh, uh, boxes on top of each individual uh, group and they kind of will all move and animate together. So pretty for straightforward process on the whole. When you're done with what you've got, you can go ahead and you can export it out. 
and you can export it as an OBJ or GLTF, or you can upload directly to Sketchfab. So you can take your results and the textures and all that and have them out and bring them into a Blender, Godot, Unity, Unreal, whatever. So this is very game engine friendly. And while we're here, you may notice one other thing. We have this plugins options here, and there's a bunch of different plugin options. So we've got one that I've already installed, Shape Generator, and then we've got a bunch available down here. So uh, this adds additional functionality. When you're dealing with, for example, um, just cubes, uh, creating complex shapes can get a little bit annoying. So in that case, I went ahead and I installed uh, this guy, Shape Generator. All right. So then what you'll notice to come up here uh, and you'll see under filter, I have generate shapes. And what we could do is generate a couple of different kinds of shapes. We could create an octagon. Uh, and then we just basically set up the values for it. And sure, there we go. And I just created a giant octagon using that plugin. So this guy right here, you'll notice it's basically still just using a cube, 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 and a cube. It should just organize them into a single group, which you can now um, use however you wish. So if you want to have uh, more complicated shapes in your world, you can easily do so. Uh, put them all together like so and you are good to go. So that is another thing that Blockbench has going for it. It has these plugins uh, to do things like create compound shapes for you. If you want to get rid of anything, of course, you could do it right here. And all of the available plugins are over here. So if there's some extensibility that you want to add or you want to create your own, uh, it is an extensible uh, tool. And uh, yeah, do be sure to check out the uh, plugins. You can also import voxel files as one of these plugins, and you can export out to 3Core. Uh, uh, I think that's part of the 3JS, for example. So definitely um, an extensible plugin-based system for Blockbench. Uh, it, it's just... I don't know, it's all around, it's kind of a cool tool. It's, it's a very, very, very specific art style. Uh, but again, if you take it out of the hands of someone like me and give it to someone with some like artistic ability, you can make some pretty cool stuff. Uh, again, if, if you're going for that uh, low polygon Minecrafty look, as you can see, the results are here and all of the tools, everything you need, the texture editing, the animation tools, everything is in Blockbench, which again is completely free and available on all major platforms. So what's not to love about that? So anyways, that is Blockbench, uh, a free uh, polygonal modeler, for very specific art style, uh, able to export out, uh, you know, ready to be used in something like Minecraft, but also uh, very game engine friendly with GLTF and OBJ format exporting. Let me know what you think. Again, this one is very niche, very specific area, but it is a cool tool and it is definitely one worth bringing to your attention, especially again, free. That's always awesome. And if you do like their work, again, remember they are donation based. They've also got a discord. So if you've got some questions, do check them out. All right, that's Blockbench. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.